So, you bought a Tesla and still treat it as a gas car? Driving to a supercharger every few days, paying twice as much and thinking, this is how it's supposed to work. I get it. Many people ask about superchargers in the comments. And I think it's time to reveal the truth. Relying only on superchargers and skipping home charging is not the smartest move. And by the way, according to our channel view statistics, you guys aren't really fond of our wild custom builds. Well, fair enough. We respect and follow your preferences. So today, we're covering the basics. Let's see if this video will save you time and money. Here's a statement you've probably never heard. According to the US Department of Energy, 80% of EV charging happens at home. Tesla surely knows that better than anyone else, but they prefer not to mention it often. Why? Because they've invested billions in the supercharger network, and of course they want to make profit out of it. We've been repairing Teslas for over 10 years. What I'm about to share with you isn't pulled from marketing brochures. This is real-world data from real drivers with real Teslas. Here's what you'll learn today. Why even the weakest outlet in your garage can save you hundreds every month. How to build a simple home setup that makes superchargers unnecessary. And the real charging statistics Tesla doesn't like to advertise. But if you love waiting in line at charging stations, overspending and planning your life around superchargers, this video is probably not for you. If you'd rather make your Tesla work for you, then stick around. Also, if you enjoy our videos, please give them a like and consider subscribing. We regularly share useful and unique content. The more feedback we get from you, the more motivated we are to keep creating. Let's talk about money. Tesla is a public company. The supercharger network is their business. According to Bloomberg Neff, it could bring in over $7.4 billion in revenue by 2030. Let's take Los Angeles as an example, just because it's easier for me to break it down. If you're charging at home, it costs about $7.50 for every 100 miles you drive. You can save even more by setting your charging schedule to off-peak hours, when electricity is cheaper. Now compare that to a supercharger in Los Angeles. Charging there can cost you around $190 for 1,000 miles. That's almost three times more expensive than home charging. Not to mention idle fees if the car is left plugged in after charging is complete. So the cost difference is significant and it really adds up. Plus, you usually have to drive some extra miles just to reach a supercharger, which means even more time and costs. Now I see a lot of concerns about home charging and honestly, most of them just don't hold up. First, there's this belief that you need some super expensive equipment to charge your Tesla at home. That's just not true. If you've got a regular outlet in your garage that can handle 12 to 15 amps, you're basically set. Most garages already have exactly what you need. No fancy gear required. Then there's the home charging is way too slow complaint. But here's the thing. Even if you're using a basic outlet that pulls 9 to 12 amps overnight, it is usually enough to cover your daily driving. It's actually cheaper, super convenient, and it doesn't eat up your time. You just plug in when you get home and wake up ready to go. And finally, some people think that using superchargers all the time won't hurt the battery. Look, Tesla's battery cooling and protection systems are great. But at the end of the day, fast charging still puts more stress on your battery than regular charging at home. Supercharging is really designed for road trips and emergencies, not for your daily routine. Tesla knows many people treat their car like a gas vehicle, roll up to charge when empty. They're not trying to scare off new buyers with talks about outlets, amps, and required planning. But if you plan ahead, even a little, 
and figure out a spot to charge overnight, you'll save a ton and live stress-free for years. Step 1. Find an outlet. Pause this video. Go to your garage. Got a 110, a 220, or maybe a 380 volt outlet. You're almost set. Good news. Tesla can work with any of them. There are adapters for basically every type of plug. The cheapest standard Tesla cable handles 5 to 32 amps. 32 amps is more than enough, even for rideshare drivers. We'll cover more advanced home charging setups in a future video. But right now I'm giving you the simplest and cheapest way to start. Here is what you get with home charging. No more time wasted waiting at chargers. You stop thinking about how far your car goes each day because it's always enough. You won't know your actual range because it will always be enough for the day. You save money and time. For those of you who didn't find an outlet or the garage itself, that's okay, you're not chained to your apartment. Look for apartment complexes with EV chargers or look for shared parking with plugs. There are always options. After switching to home charging, you cut your charging costs in half. You stop planning your day around supercharger stops. Your battery is under less stress. And every morning you wake up with a full tank. Hey Tesla owners, let's talk about one of the most dangerous charging myths out there. The one even some experts online keep repeating. It's already cost several clients thousands of dollars in early battery replacements. At our service center, we see dozens of Teslas every month and honestly, it's frustrating to watch owners follow tips from YouTube that go against Tesla's own guidelines. So stick around till the end so you don't fall into the same trap that's already caught other drivers. The false advice you hear most of the time. Don't charge your Tesla every day. Don't keep the car plugged in all the time. This kills the battery because of constant stress. Sounds very logical, right? In reality, it's complete nonsense. What Tesla says officially? Tesla states clearly in the owner's manual. The single most important way to preserve the high voltage battery is to leave your vehicle plugged in when you're not using it. In the latest Cybertruck manual, Tesla is even more direct. Tesla strongly recommends leaving your Cybertruck plugged in when not in use. This keeps the battery at an optimal state of charge. Tesla also adds, the battery performs best with regular charging. There's no benefit to wait for the battery to run low before plugging it in. The truth about how the BMS works. Here's what actually happens and what so-called experts don't understand. The BMS, battery management system, is always working, whether your car is plugged in or not. It's a critical safety measure. The BMS contains small BNB boards that divide the battery into segments, and each BNB board monitors every individual cell. Why charging cycles aren't a problem? Smartphones don't have space for battery cooling, so each charge and discharge puts a lot of stress on it. That's why it makes sense to count charge cycles in phones. But Tesla cars have advanced cooling systems, so regular charging doesn't hurt the battery. What really stresses a Tesla battery is letting it run too low or keeping it fully charged for too long. That's why with modern EV batteries, you don't need to count charging cycles. For LFP batteries, charging to 100% does not shorten their lifespan. It's a fundamentally different battery chemistry. From our experience and customer feedback, Tesla owners who plug in regularly, see very little battery wear, rarely have range issues and have stable battery system performance. On the other hand, owners who let their Tesla discharge before the next charging cycle more often report range loss, face problems with battery system calibration, and visit service centers with battery health concerns. The danger of deep discharge. Tesla is clear. If the battery is discharged to 0%, other components may be damaged or require replacement, like the low voltage battery. And Tesla explicitly states, costs from deep discharge are not covered under warranty. When a Tesla battery reaches about 15% charge, 
it enters energy saving mode to protect itself from deep discharge. At close to 0%, the battery stops powering the onboard electronics entirely. So, where do the myths come from? The problem is that people apply experience from old lithium-ion batteries to Tesla's modern systems. But Tesla uses advanced thermal management and complex BMS with thousands of sensors. It utilizes machine learning algorithms to optimize charging, not to mention ongoing software updates. So basically your 2010 iPhone and a 2024 Tesla are worlds apart in technology. Healthy charging habits. For daily use, just plug in your Tesla when you get home and set your charging limit to around 70 or 80%. Keep the car plugged in all the time. It's totally safe. Once a week, let it charge up to 90 or even 100%, especially if you have an NCA or NCM battery. If your Tesla has an LFP battery, charging to 100% once a week is not only safe, it's actually recommended by the manufacturer. If you're storing your Tesla for a long time, keep it plugged in, lower the charge limit to about 50 or 60% and turn off sentry mode to save energy. And remember, if you're going on a road trip, charge to 100% before you leave. If you don't have access to charging, just be mindful and conserve energy until you can plug in again. The most expensive Tesla repair is battery replacement. A used battery costs from around seven to $15,000, depending on the model. And there are no new batteries available on the market. The cheapest battery maintenance is simply following the manufacturer's official recommendations because they're based on thousands of hours of testing and millions of miles driven. Many EV owners make costly mistakes that reduce battery lifespan, lead to expensive repairs, and in some cases, even dangerous situations. But don't worry, we'll guide you through the most common battery killing mistakes and explain how to avoid them. Most of us are used to charging our phones to 100% and letting them drain to zero before plugging them in again. But treating your Tesla battery the same way might not be a good idea. Your Tesla doesn't have just one battery like your phone, it has hundreds of them. The battery management system, or BMS, constantly balances charge levels to prevent overcharging and excessive wear. Even if a single module degrades faster, the BMS ensures the system remains stable. Unlike your phone, Tesla batteries also have active cooling systems. This keeps them in an optimal temperature range, extending their lifespan. But what actually damages the battery? It's not charging to 100% itself, but charging to 100% and letting the car sit in extreme heat. If you fully charge your battery and then immediately drive, there's no issue. However, leaving it at 100% for hours or days, especially under the sun, can be harmful. The ideal charging range is between 50 and 80% for daily use. Only charge to 100% if you're immediately leaving the charging station. There's a huge misconception that the more often you charge your Tesla, the faster the battery degrades. This is completely false. The dumbest question I received when selling one of my Teslas was a request to show how many charging cycles my vehicle had. Tesla's lithium ion batteries don't wear out from charging. They degrade with time, not charge cycles. What really affects longevity is heat and how you charge. Frequent home charging is good because it uses low power AC charging, which is much gentler on the battery. For some reason, no one mentions that the number one rule in owning an EV is installing a charger at home. I once decided to scan my wife's Nissan Leaf battery after four years of use. She always charged at home during the night. And guess what? There was no sign of wear. The condition of the battery remained the same. On the other hand, relying too much on superchargers can heat the battery excessively, leading to long-term wear. Supercharging isn't inherently bad, but constant fast charging, especially in hot weather, can reduce battery health over the years. Additionally, when you charge at home overnight, you are not only preserving your battery health, but also saving time on charging the next day. This is a huge time savior. Now back to charging tips. Cold weather is another silent battery killer. Have you ever noticed that your Tesla charges slower in winter? That's because lithium ion batteries don't like the cold. To prevent this, always precondition your battery before charging. Use the Tesla app to warm it up before plugging in. If you use Tesla's navigation system when driving to a supercharger, it will automatically start preheating the battery so it charges at full speed. If you don't precondition, your car will protect the battery by reducing charging speeds, which means more time wasted at the charger. Some people believe that aggressive driving damages the battery. While it's true that high-performance driving increases energy consumption, 
it doesn't necessarily degrade the battery unless you're constantly pushing it to the limit. During high performance tests on racetrack, Tesla's software automatically limits power output to prevent overheating. Tesla's active cooling system ensures your battery stays within a safe temperature range, even in extreme conditions. This means that daily aggressive driving is not a big deal. However, frequent racing and repeated supercharging could potentially reduce battery longevity. During our racetrack competition in Willow Springs, I went to supercharge my Cyber 3 after every track run. So this potentially didn't contribute to the vehicle's battery health, but unless you beat the speed record on Nürburgring daily and supercharge after each run, your battery should be fine. One of the biggest mistakes people make is leaving their Tesla plugged in at 100% in the sun. If you fully charge your Tesla and leave it plugged into a supercharger under direct sunlight, you're putting unnecessary stress on the battery. The combination of heat and a high charge state leads to faster battery degradation. Your Tesla will try to cool the battery, but over time, constant exposure to extreme temperatures can reduce its lifespan. If your Tesla is at 100% and sitting in extreme heat, you might see a warning about reduced regenerative braking. That's a clear sign the battery is protecting itself. To avoid this, charge to 80% for daily use and try not to leave it at full charge for long periods. One of the most impressive things about Tesla is its thermal management system. Whether you're in the Arctic or the desert, Tesla actively heats or cools the battery to keep it at optimal operating temperatures. During our family trip to the Arctic, the Tesla's battery remained at a stable 68 degrees Fahrenheit to its self-heating system. So, while external temperatures can impact charging speeds, your battery is much more resilient than you think, as long as you treat it right. Let's quickly recap the key takeaways. Charge between 50 and 80% for daily use. Use home charging instead of frequent supercharging. Always precondition the battery in cold weather before charging. Never leave your Tesla at 100% under the blazing sun. Tesla's battery is designed to last over 10 years, but only if you take care of it properly. Have you ever made one of these battery mistakes? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe for more EV tips and hacks. See you next time.